Hi, I'm Georgia Weitman. I'm founder and CEO of Bulb Security LLC, and I'm going to be talking about Android permissions today. So here's my Android, and I'm going to start, I'm going to read you a list of permissions that is in a pretty normal app that you see a lot. A lot of people have this app, and we're just going to take a look at the permissions that it has and think about what might be the implications of this. So. This app wants to be able to read your contacts, so it can see all your contacts in your phone, all the people that you have saved in there, all their phone numbers, email addresses, etc. Also wants to be able to write to them, so it can add new contacts or delete your contacts. Not sure why that would be useful to an app. Um, it wants to send SMSs. This actually is under the heading services that cost you money, so that comes out and directly says it to the user, yes, we can actually run up your bill with this. We can send SMSs to 900 numbers. We can send SMSs if you're in, say, Amsterdam and you're from the United States, we can send SMSs now, and that's gonna be about 10 US cents an SMS, so if it sends hundreds of them, that's gonna be a big bill. And if you don't have unlimited text messages, it can still send unlimited text messages, and it won't stop just because you've reached your limit. So it can cost you money here. And what's interesting about that is it's all going to be in the background. If an app sends SMSs, text messages on your behalf and you look at your SMS application and look at the sent SMSs, it won't show up there. So you're not actually going to have any indication that it's doing this. It also wants access to your location, so it wants to know your exact GPS location. So every time you've ever turned on Google Maps, if for instance you're here in Amsterdam and you're trying to get someplace and you turn on your GPS, Suddenly that app has access to all that data, knows where you are and when. It wants to be able to edit my SMSs or MMSs, so my pictures that come in over SMS as well, it can see those, it can read them, it can also receive them. So what that actually means is it can intercept them on my behalf. It can actually make it so that I never see them or that you never see them. So it can be part of a botnet or just change your messages and such that you never see them. And again, this can end up costing you a lot of money if you're in Amsterdam and you don't have a European SIM card in. It also wants access to my account. So any account that I have on here, obviously since it's Android, it's gonna have my, my Google accounts are just going to be in there by default. Any other accounts I put on here, if I have Twitter, I love Twitter. Who doesn't love Twitter, right? So it actually has access to that. It can act as an account authenticator, so it can log into those accounts for me. It can even manage those accounts, so it could actually change my password on my other accounts and make it so that I can never log into them again. This app can do that. And it wants access to storage, so it can modify everything on my USB, my SD card in here. Um, that might be a good thing, you know, if you've ever taken strange pictures with your phone at night, maybe if my app deletes them for me, that actually may be a really good functionality. Who knows? It also wants to be able to read my phone state and identity. That's one that users are like, what is that? What does that really mean? It just wants to read its identity, but that actually reads the personal identification number of your phone. A lot of apps use that. They use that as the way to like uniquely identify your phone, but that's not a really good way to do it. That's You can kind of think of that as the same thing as using a credit card number to uniquely identify a user when they log in. I mean, that's terrible. No one would ever do that in an app, right? But people do it here. IMEI numbers are worth about as much to an attacker as a credit card, so not very much. Again, about 10 cents. But if you install this app on millions of users, same sort of scenario. Lots of credit card numbers, lots of IMEIs, lots of money for attackers, lots of unhappy users. Let's see. It also wants to use system tools, so it can prevent the phone from sleeping. If you have an Android and you've ever had the battery run down, if you have an Android, I'm sure you've seen the battery run down when you don't want it to. That's just the nature of the beast. But it can prevent it from sleeping, so run down your battery even faster. And write your sync settings, so it can change what's going to happen when you plug it into the computer. You could get a nasty surprise next time you plug it in. And the final one, it wants full internet access. So. What is this app? This is actually, according to a lot of news sites, the most popular Android app, the most downloaded and installed by users of all time. That would be Facebook. Yay. Wow, those are a lot of permissions, and this is the most popular app ever, so users are just accepting those permissions. So in my talk, we're actually going to talk about bypassing the permission model entirely, so having apps, for instance, with no permissions that are able to gain permissions from other badly coded apps. 
but I guess I'm undermining my own research here because maybe you don't even need to bypass the Android permission model if users are accepting these kinds of permissions just off the bat. I mean, I have Facebook on my computer. I've had it since it was for college students only. Love me some Facebook. But Facebook on my computer, it only needs access to the internet. I don't have GPS on my computer. Well, you do now. But back in the day, my desktop computer doesn't have GPS. And it, it couldn't read my contact info. It couldn't send SMSs. It still can't send SMSs. And it works fine. And it works great. And everybody loves it. And the people who made Facebook just made a billion dollars. So get rid of some of these permissions, Facebook. And it's not just Facebook. I'm using Facebook as an example. But if I go through just about every app that's on my phone, which you can do this, actually. Users think that once they install it, they can't really see the permissions anymore except on an update. But if you actually go to the settings on your phone and then click on apps, you can see every app that's installed. And if you choose a specific app, it'll show you the permissions. So you can actually take a look at what you've accepted as a user and maybe start to think about what could these apps possibly be doing on my behalf that I don't know about. And it's actually kind of scary how much permissions we give these apps just straight off the bat. It kind of makes it that you don't really need to exploit an Android. You can just install an app with permissions and then you have access to just about all of the information on the phone. And the users have specifically said yes. You have to click yes and say yes, you may now take over my phone if you so choose. And users don't really have an option. It's like either we don't use Facebook, which is just not an option. We have to use Facebook on our phone. I mean, come on. Or TweetDeck or any of the other apps that everyone uses. So we either say yes, we want you to take over our phone or we say no and we don't use it. So users need to start speaking out and telling the app companies that they need to start looking at what permissions they're actually asking for and thinking about what they could possibly be opening users up to.